Hey friends, welcome back to the cabin and today I'm going to share with you a very special tea recipe. Well, summer is finally here and the heat and the humidity is really ramping up, but that is a wonderful thing for our garden. With the coolness that we've had here lately, everything was a little bit sluggish and, and kind of like it didn't want to get out from under the covers and get going for the day and everything. But now that the heat has finally hit and we've had a few good days of rain, and the humidity is up, the garden is just going wild. It's going really, really good. But with all the fruit that's being set, all of the vegetables that are coming on and everything, it's time for me to go ahead and re-fertilize everything. And I'm going to show you my absolute favorite fertilizer. And it's all organic. It's all that I use on my plants. now. My husband and I have a little bit of a competition. He's got his plants and I've got mine. And so when he fertilizes with his miracle Grow, he knows not to venture off over into mine. So it's, it's just a little friendly competition and we're kind of having fun with it. But I'm gonna share with you my worm casting tea it is phenomenal for so many reasons. So I'm gonna bring the camera down just a little bit closer and I'm gonna talk to you about the ingredients that we put in there and how we make the tea. So maybe you can get a chance to make some and really help your garden thrive, especially through the heat that we've got coming up. It's gonna help it a lot. Well, I've got you back here on our back porch. This is kind of the workhorse of the cabin. A lot goes on back here on this back porch. And one of the things that I do back here is I, this is where I make my worm casting tea. And that's what I wanted to show you today. And I'm so excited to share this with you because I am just amazed at the results that I'm getting with the worm casting tea. When I started studying about worms and worm casting tea and worm castings in general, I was just amazed. And we'll cover some of that in just a bit. But let's go over. Um, what I use in my worm cast and tea. Now, we're gonna start with a five gallon bucket with about uh, mostly full. You gotta have some room for the stuff that we're gonna add to this and it's hot, I'm sweating, <laughs> the humidity's up. So we're gonna, it's not full and I'll show you in just a, a bit as we put stuff in there, but you're gonna have a five gallon bucket mostly full with either rainwater or well water or distilled water. You want to avoid chlorinated water at all costs because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be growing soil friendly good bacteria so we can't have any chlorine or chloramine in our water all right so we've got our five gallon bucket and we're going to have a mostly full with water and then we're of course we're going to put our worm castings in there and i'll tell you the amounts and everything in just a bit we'll get to it but the worm castings are full of um they're full of lots of microorganisms that the worms pick up in the soil and off of the rotting or decaying vegetables and fruit and the, comp the manure that's composting, anything that I put in there that's uh, good for the worms, they're gonna break it down and it's gonna pass through their body and it's gonna be full of healthy soil building microorganisms. So we're gonna start with the worm castings and then we're going to go on to the next thing that I add is kelp meal. It has 60 plus minerals and trace elements in it, um, 12 vitamins and 21 amino acids. And it's also a, a small source of nitrogen and potassium, but it's like a vitamin for your soul. And there's things in there, especially, well, let me, let me give you a, um, uh, why we need that, okay? So on, just say in, in, in a large garden or, an, or on a commercial farm or something, it's very common to use chemical fertilizers, but those are actually a salt. And you know what salt does to the soil. It's, 
it actually depletes it, kills it of, of um, the, good, the good microorganisms and bacteria. So over time, that soil is sterile. So what we're trying to do, which not so much my raised beds because they come from the good compost, but we're just going to maintain and build the micro life in the soil. And I'll tell you why as we keep going, but uh, the kelp is like a vitamin for your soil. Um, and then what the, another thing that we add is the azomite. Now it's high in calcium and magnesium, but it is also very high in trace minerals because if, if my memory serves me right, it is actually from lava. It's ground lava. And you can imagine that lava comes from deep in the earth and just mineral rich, uh, uh, full of trace minerals. So we're going to add the azomite as another supplement. And then the last thing, this one I'm, ex well, not last, next to last. This one I'm so excited about too. This is crab meal. And the reason that we're going to add crab meal is because it is full of chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N. And there is a bacteria that loves chitin. And that bacteria actually deters pest. So if we're going to feed that bacteria, what the theory is, is that we're going to multiply that bacteria. And so we're going to have less of a pest problem. Um, the plants will take up the chitin into their, into their cells and the pests don't want to eat on the plants. So that's the, those three additives. But the last one that we're going to talk about is unsulfured blackstrap molasses. Now, there is some controversy on adding this. There's a couple of schools of thought on adding this to your fertilizer teas, your compost tea, or to your um, worm casting tea, but I am a firm believer in blackstrap molasses. I've used it for years to amend things in my garden. I've added it to other things and, and used it in my garden, and I've been very pleased with it. But what the school of thought is, is that you, if you add it to your tea, is that what can happen is the bad bacteria can proliferate and we're trying to grow good bacteria. But what we're gonna do with the tea is we're gonna aerate the tea. We're gonna take it from anaerobic to aerobic. And most bad bacteria, they're anaerobic and the good bacteria is aerobic. So that's why it's so important that we aerate the tea. And I'm going to show you how I do that in just a bit. Oh, I'm so excited to get this all put together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch you over to another camera and I'm going to show you how I start aerating the water and how we add our ingredients and get going. So what I have here are two aquarium stones that I soaked in some rainwater for about an hour and they're hooked to a small aquarium. It's actually a double aquarium pump. It has two outlets on it. And we're gonna go ahead and put that in there and let it start aerating. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our worm castings. And for a five gallon bucket, what I add is about two cups. So this little scoop right here is um, a little less than a cup. So we're gonna add three of these. Now there are some um, there are some videos out there that actually show the worm castings in a bag and I tried that the first time and I didn't like it. I felt like the water and the air, the oxygen was not able to get to all of the castings. So I prefer just to drop this in the water. And the next thing that we're going to add is about three to four tablespoons of our kelp. And then, and of course, we're going to have to stir all of this. This is our azomite. We're going to put, and that was about uh, two tablespoons of azomite. And now we've got about two tablespoons of the crab meal. And then I'm going to just kind of guess at the blackstrap molasses. But it's going to be about one two tablespoons, okay? Now, the funny thing about the crab meal is um, I was raised on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and as soon as I opened the package, it just reminded me of the Gulf of Mexico. <laughs> so that, that was a sweet thing. <laughs> All right, so I gotta stop a second and go get something to stir this with and I'll be right back with you. So I found a spoon 
and it didn't come out of my kitchen and it won't go back in my kitchen. All right, so we just stir this up. And of course I'm bumping those stones and everything in there, but that's okay. We're just gonna kind of get this mixed in and you can kind of see that even the kelp absorbed the water, everything absorbed the water. And um, it's, it's settled down in there. And so we're gonna just keep this aerating for anywhere from 48 to 72 hours. I'm probably gonna lean towards the 72 hours because of the chitin, because of the crab meal, because I wanna be sure, because that was, the, the shells are hard, you know, so I wanna be sure that we can leach that out and release those nutrients and that chitin into the tea. And I'll bring you back in about three days and we'll talk about the next steps and how we get it ready to put on our garden. So I've got a clean five gallon bucket here. And of course, here's my worm casting tea. And this is a little bit too heavy for me to pour over in here. So I'm gonna do it a few buckets at a time. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all of the worm casting tea over into here, and then we'll be able to strain it. Now this actually did brew for a full 72 hours. And it's later in the day, it's actually probably after seven o'clock here, but with the heat, I really wanted to wait till later in the day to put this concoction on my garden. And <laughs> it really does smell like the Gulf of Mexico with the crab meal in there. Okay, I think I can do one more and then I can just pick up the bucket if I can get this down in there. Now I'll rinse this bucket out really good, probably with rainwater, because I can put that in the yard or probably on the compost pile just to kind of give it a boost. Now what we do is we go ahead and take this bag, and that is some very good stuff right there. That brew, the, uh, the waste uh, worm castings, all of this stuff right here is still good. We can use it, and what, what I'll probably do is either like the other put it in the compost to kind of fire off the compost bin or i can just put it in one of the raised beds and incorporate it in so it's full of so many good things so but for the time being and for the sake of time i'm going to let it sit in here i can squeeze it just a little bit get some more of that out Oh yeah, and this is why I like to do it this way. Instead of uh, one of the small bags and letting the small bag brew, I just feel like that this is just a more thorough way to really brew the tea, because the water comes, comes into contact with everything. All right, so I'm gonna set this over here, and I will put that in the garden later. In my watering can, I've got about two, about two gallons, two and a half gallon can, but it's not full. So I've got about two gallons. Now you don't want to use this tea full strength. So we're going to take about two cups, maybe that's probably closer to three cups. And we're going to pour it in here. And that's it. That's what goes on the garden.
Well, you can see that the proof is in my tomato jungle, the results of the worm cast and tea. And I was so excited to bring this to you and show you how you can make it yourself and use it at home. Now we did add a few things to it, but if all you can do is is find some worm castings. A lot of the uh, home stores and garden stores are starting to carry them more now. Or if you can find somebody that raises worms, that's an even better source. But um, if you can just get the castings, it's gonna be phenomenal. But now we did add the kelp and the azomite and the uh, crab meal for the, for the chitin. And the chitin is the pest deterrent because it makes the, the plants so strong, their cell walls so strong, it's harder for the bugs to really um, take a bite out of them, I guess, so to speak. So they would rather go to the nutritionally challenged plants that are weak and they can um, make a feast out of those. But I haven't had hardly any problems at all with pests or diseases. I'm seeing a little bit along here on the ground and I do have a little blight starting. Heat and humidity, it's just almost impossible to not to. But I'll bring you a video on another treatment that I use to keep blight at bay as long as possible and it works as well. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got some value out of it and you get a chance to try it. The sun is going down quick, so I'm losing light, but I wanna share this with you. Don't ever forget that your heavenly father loves you and we'll see you on the next video. God bless.